Welcome back to another video, my friends. My name is Bijan T, for those of you that don't know. And for those of you that don't know my name, that means you're probably new here. So make sure you click the subscribe button. You might find it below somewhere. You just click it, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. So anyways, my name is Bijan T, and in this video, we're going to be going over a trade that I did in which I made about $1,480 using less than $3,850. So the trade, I, I, it was a swing trade, the majority of it, but part of it, part of it was also a day trade. So I, I don't know. There's no name for day trade slash swing trade. So we're, I'm just going to call it a mess. I'm going to say I made a mess today, guys. Uh, but it's a good mess, a profitable mess. So anyways, let's jump into it here. So it was, like I said, a day trade and partially a swing trade. So it's going to show 1,210 profit on the day. But that's because I got into the trade yesterday and I had a profit on it yesterday. I didn't close it out. So that profit basically transfers over. It just doesn't show that profit that I had yesterday from today on the profit loss day. It would have showed it on the profit loss open if the position was still open, but I closed out the position. So it doesn't show anything open. And then it just tells us the profit that we made today. So there's more of a profit on it, but I'll explain that to you guys with all the orders and everything here. So. First things first, I was trading puts. Puts means you make money when the stock goes down. So as the value of the stock went down, the value of my puts increased. I just want to give this little basic understanding, basic explanation because I know I've had a lot of few, a lot of new like, you know, followers on some of my social media platforms. So I know there's probably some beginners, people that are new to trading watching these videos. So I want you guys to basically understand, "Oh, wow, how is he able to make money with it going down? How is he able to trade this expensive stock with a small amount of money so on and so forth, things like that." So that's why I like to give these breakdowns. So, I had puts. Puts means you you make money when the stock goes down. I had 30 contracts, 26 plus four right here. They were both 92 cents each. Now with options, one is equivalent to 100. So if it shows 92 cents, it's actually $92 each. So I had 30 of them initially at 1143. There was a little bit of a difference between them about you know, like 13 second difference because I placed the order. I got a partial fill. And then the other, the rest of it was still waiting to fill and I wasn't going to rush it. I didn't feel the need to chase it or change an order. Usually I do that on my morning trades because things move really quickly. So you need to change it. But with this kind of a trade at 1143 AM when the market's practically dead, yeah, there's no really need to like chase things around or move orders or anything like that. So I kind of just let it sit for 13 seconds, let it fill the rest. So this is where it is. Initially, I got into the trade yesterday, 429, 30 contracts at 92 each which if you do the math, $92 times 30 is 2,760. So the initial cost of the trade was $2,760. And that was right around this area yesterday here at the 1143. I'll zoom in on it more here. Right here, we're not on a one minute chart. Let me see if I put on a one minute chart, it looks better for you guys. Right here. Right, basically, long story short, he was struggling with this 140 area. He kept coming up to it, kept coming up to it. He couldn't get above it. Every single time that he came to the 140 area, the supply was higher than the demand. Every single time. It wouldn't get above it. Oh, hey, we got buyers, we got buyers. Oh, no, 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 we have sellers. Oh, where there's demand, 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 demand. Oh, no, 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 no. Supply, 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 supply. Too much supply. No little... The, too little demand, eventually it's going to catch up with them. They're going to realize, oh yeah, we're not going anywhere. And then boom, 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 boom. They're going to sell off. So anyways, there's a little free random idea for you guys there. Just a little idea. Obviously, there's more reasons that go into this. It's the reason why I traded it. But I wanted to emphasize that 140 area. So obviously, I had my plan. My plan was to get out if it went above 140.50. I had a tight risk on it. And... I mainly wanted it as like an end of the day trade. This was practically the move I was looking for, for the most part, but I also knew I wanted to hold it overnight a little bit. So what mainly happened is that yesterday, I didn't do a trade in the morning. As you can see yesterday, that was my, my trade right there, was that in the afternoon because I wasn't there. I was busy at basically participating in an auction. You guys know me, if you watch some of my other videos, I do a lot of different types of auctions where I'm either bidding on like houses, cars, properties, <laughs> jewelry sometimes, you name it, anything, I'll buy anything for a good price. Anything, I kid you not, guys. Because making money doesn't, okay, well, making money comes from selling it. But at the end of the day, 
If you can offer something at a cheaper price than everybody else, it doesn't matter how good of a salesman you are or not. You're going to get the sale. So sales has to do with how you buy things. I always make a joke that I say, have a good buy. Your buy is everything. If you buy something cheap, it doesn't matter how much you sell it for. If you buy a car for cheap, it doesn't matter how much you, you know what I mean? If you buy it for less than it's worth, you have a good buy, you will have a profitable thing. Whether it's a car that you want to make a profit on, whether it's a car you want to buy and drive for a while, like I'm doing with my GTR, you know, whatever it is, and then sell it for your money back. However it is, there's, there's ways to do it. That's why I always say cash, money, cash is king, money talks, because it allows you to do that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I can't go to these auctions with loans. You can't do financing, none of that kind of nonsense. So anyways, moving forward now, that's why I, was, I didn't trade yesterday morning. I was a little tied up. So once I was done with the auction and everything like that, I came in and I said, all right, let's see what kind of hokey pokey we can do here, you know, turn ourselves about a little bit. And I placed that trade and I wanted to hold, hold it overnight as well. So that's exactly what I did. And now let me go in and, and finalize the orders for you guys. I got a little sidetracked there, but it's okay. So 2760 is what the trade cost. That's what I put into the trade so far yesterday at 1143. Then this morning, I added in 10 more contracts. This is why I say it was a mess because I can't call I can't technically call it a full on swing trade because part of it was a day trade. It was like a hybrid trade, if you will. Um, you know, it was a mess. So anyways, 10 contracts I added in at 645 a.m at $1.07 each, which is 107 each. So 10 times 107 is 1,070. So now the initial cost of the trade was 2,760. Then I added in another 1,070. So the total cost of the trade now was $3,830. So we placed this trade with less than $3,850. So basically if you had less than $4,000, if you have $4,000 in your account, you also could have placed this trade and could have made a $1,480 profit pretty much overnight or even on a quick morning trade, you know, however, however you want to look at it. But if you had that kind of capital, trading a stock like Disney as expensive as $136 per share, you could have made a $1,480 profit using less than $4,000. That, that's the idea that I'm trying to highlight here with the options and all that. So that was the cost of the trade. The cost of the trade was $3,830. That doesn't mean we're losing $3,830. It's not like you're going into Vegas and betting, oh yeah, $3,000, you know, blah, 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 here it is. No, you're not. If you're wrong, it's not gone. It's like if you buy and sell a car. If I buy a car from an auction for $3,000 thinking I can sell it for five, and then I get the car and I realize, oh man, it needs some body work. It's going to need, the engine is blown up. I need to put a new engine into the car. And the engine's going to cost 2000 you know, what? I don't know. I'll say the engine's going to cost... I mean, but you guys get my point. I don't know about how much engines cost. That's not my area of expertise. I usually, I usually don't buy cars and fix them and sell them. But, I, you know, I try to give realistic examples, but I don't want somebody commenting on the picture saying, oh my God, 2000 for an engine. What are you driving? A 1990 Nissan or a 1990 Honda Civic? I don't know. That's the kind of cars that I come from. You know what I mean? That's my, my history, my roots, you know? So that's all I really know with respect to things going wrong. I've only had these like expensive cars for like a couple years, four or five years, you know? So anyways, that's besides the fact. So my point is that I'm trying to make, if you buy a car, for $3,000, thinking you can sell it for, let's say, $3,500, and then you find out something's wrong with the car, or you find out it's not worth $3,500, it's only worth $2,500, okay, go sell the car for $2,500, take a $500 loss, don't wait for the car to go down to zero, and wait for it to blow up, or somebody to steal the car, and blah, 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 no, you have a plan, that's why I said I had a plan that if the stock does this, I'll get out, I'll take a small loss, so, cost $3,830, and then, I sold, 25 of the contracts, so I had 30, I added in 10, so total I had 40 contracts for 3,830 each, or, or total, I'm sorry, not each, 3,830 got me 40 contracts, basically. Then about seven minutes after I added in, I sold 25 of the contracts at 123 each. So you do the math, 123 times 25, that's 3,075. And I still had 15 contracts left. I was holding those to let it go a little bit more in a profitable position. And then about five minutes later, four minutes later, I sold the rest of the 15 contracts for 149 each. So 149 times 15 is $2,235. So 
I sold 25 of them for 3,075. Then I sold 15 of them for 2,235. So do the math there. 3,075 plus 2,235 is 5,310. So that's what I sold it for. So I bought it for 3,830. I sold it for 5,310. So imagine like the used car example. You buy a used car for 3,800 and then you sell it for $5,000. There's your profit right there. So just to reiterate, we sold it for 5,310. We bought it for 3,830. So subtract that 3,830 from the 5,310, basically subtract the cost of the trade from what you sold it for. And that's where you basically get a 1,480 total profit. And like I said, it only shows, you know, 1,210 here because that's all I did on the day. But remember, keep in mind, I got into some of it yesterday as well. So overall, it was about a $1,500 profit 1,480 using less than $3,850. And then let me go in and finalize the chart and wrap it all up for you guys and show you guys how all this stuff is going. And then we'll, we'll wrap the video up there. So 652, I'm sorry, 645, 652, then 656. Zoom in right here. So here is the 645 where I added in to the trade. We got to pop back up to the, the uh, 139 area. He struggled with it. You know, long story short, the supply was higher than, de than the demand. A few of my things kicked in. A few of my flashlights said, hey, 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 we're going back down. And I'm like, all right, I'm about to be, you know, I'm about to make my account like Fat Albert. I'm kidding. This is why I can't be a comedian. That was such a dry joke. Anyways, um, <laughs> so this is where I added in, basically. I added in 10 more contracts here. I initially got in 30 contracts here. Added in 10 more here. So total, I was at in the trade 3,830. And then as the value of the stock went down, the value of my puts went up. And right here at the 652 area, this is where I sold the 25. Then as we continue drop, 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 dropping right here, I was supposed to hold my initial plan for the rest of the 15 was I was going to hold it until 137.50, uh, this area, 137.50 here. But I saw like a reversal thing coming in and kind of telling me we're going back up. And I kind of was like, all right, well, let me just be done with it. Uh, I didn't want to wait like another hour or so or to see how long it would take for me to get the move that I wanted. So I just closed out the rest right here at the 656. And, you know, he bounced, chopped, lingered a little bit. And then obviously, you know, it could have been more, you know, a lot more. It probably could have been like a $3,000 profit if I was still holding it at this point. But there he came back. He bounced back up. You know, would have, could have, should have. It doesn't matter. You know, I had my plan. I stuck to my plan. I made my profit. And there it was. Quick little move from right here to right there. And like I said, I got into this trade towards the end of the day. I was a little tied up in the morning dealing with an auction and then I closed out the trade here. So, you know, quick little video that I wanted to put together for you guys. One, because I could, if you, if you go watch the other two or three videos I did, I, I make the video so late at night. Like right now, what time is it? It's like 8.30 for me right now. It's not that late. So the stuff is still there. But usually I make it so late at night that it's like the next day, it all disappears. So I figured, you know what? Since it's all there, since I have some time here, let me make a quick little video for them. I'm going to be going out of town later this week. So I probably might not be, you know, making videos that often. And I'm going to be doing probably a little bit more swing trading rather than day trading. I'm still going to be mixing it up a little bit. Um, but I guess that, that's the beauty of trading. That's, you know, what kind of job lets you make your own hours? Oh, I don't want to go to work today. I don't want to go to work this morning. Okay, well, come in, come in at the end of the day if you want. You don't even have to come in today at all if you don't want to. You don't come in this whole week, you know? I might even partake in the whole sell in May, go away if you've heard of that whole thing. It's, it's, it's not something to be, you know, concerned about. It's just that the volume usually dries up a little bit more uh, around the summertime because a lot of people sell in May and they go away. They go on vacation, just kind of like how I'm doing at the end of this week. I'm going to be going on vacation. What a coincidence, selling in May and going away. And it's the first time that I actually like, participate. I act, I act like it's an actual thing. I'm participating in the event. But um, anyways, I'm just rambling at this point, guys. So here was the trade. We made 1480 using less than 3830. I don't know. It sounds weird saying that. We made 1480 using less than $3,830. So just wanted to kind of make this video to kind of give you guys a little something something here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. 
Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And go follow me on Instagram and Twitter, guys. Who's Bijan T? That's usually where you're going to find me. Even if I'm not posting on YouTube, I'll be posting on there because I usually post a lot of other general stuff there too. I'm always posting rants and talking about this, talking about that. I try to keep this YouTube channel specifically for trading. But who knows? I might even start making general videos like, you know, like the ones I make on Instagram too for YouTube too. There's nothing holding me back. There's no law that says I can't, you know make a little motivational video and put it on YouTube. So anyways, guys, all right, this is it. I'm rambling, so we're ending it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I will talk to you all soon.